Hi all and welcome back. This is Professor Trulove's Concepts for Nurses series and I am Professor Terry Trulove. And in this episode, continuing our respiratory series, we will look at upper respiratory infections including such things as rhinitis, sinusitis, pharyngitis, tonsillitis, peritonsillar abscesses, laryngitis, and influenza. Sources for this episode include Iggy's Medical Surgical Nursing and Sol's Introduction to Critical Care Nursing. As I am creating this episode, many of us are suffering from rhinitis because of the Southern California Superbloom. Rhinitis is simply an inflammation of the nasal mucosa, hay fever, or allergies. However, infections can occur as well. The manifestations of rhinitis include headache, nasal irritation and congestion, sneezing, and a runny nose, or rhinorrhea. Interventions include antihistamine, leukotriene inhibitors, mast cell stabilizers, decongestants, antipyretics, antibiotics if it, is, if it does turn out to be an infection, and supportive therapy, including complementary and alternative therapy, such as using vaporizers, humidity, vitamin C, and even zinc. For many people, such alternative therapies do have some efficacy. Similar to rhinitis is sinusitis, and while rhinitis is inflammation of the nasal mucosa, sinusitis is inflammation of the sinus mucosa, usually caused by such organisms as Streptococcus pneumoniae, Haemophilus influenzae, Diplococcus, and Bacteroids. The illustration here is a CT of the ethmoid and maxillary sinuses. Non-surgical management for sinusitis includes the use of broad-spectrum antibiotics, analgesics to deal with the pain and the fever, decongestants to reduce the amount of mucus, steam humidification to ease the flow of that mucus, hot or wet packs over the sinus area as a comfort, nasal saline irrigations, although those have come under disfavor because of increased infections as of late, and of course, increasing overall fluid intake to make the mucus more fluid and easier to remove from the body. The common sore throat is usually a result of pharyngitis, that is, inflammation of the pharyngeal mucous membranes. Common symptoms associated with pharyngitis include odynophagia, which is painful swallowing, dysphagia, which is difficulty swallowing, or can be also identified as the sensation of having difficulty swallowing, like a lump in your throat, fever, hyperemia. Now, strep throat, which is a form of pharyngitis, pharyngitis, can lead to serious medical complications. You should screen with the rapid antigen test, or the RAT, and you'll get results in 15 minutes. A rare complication is epiglottitis, which can lead to inflammation of the epiglottis and therefore lead to the inability to properly maintain the patency of the airway. However, again, it is a rare complication. Tonsillitis is an infection or inflammation of the tonsils and the surrounding lymphatic tissues. It is usually an airborne infection that is highly contagious, normally bacterial. Treatments include antibiotics for 7 to 10 days, and if the tonsillitis persists or is increasing in frequency or is causing difficulties with breathing or swallowing, surgical intervention may be required. There has been some controversy of late about tonsillectomy. However, given those complications, it is still a relatively common procedure. Left untreated, acute tonsillitis can cause the complication known as peritonsillar abscesses, or PTA. Manifestations of PTA include pus causing one-sided swelling with deviation of the uvula, trimus, or lockjaw, and difficulty breathing, bad breath, swollen lymph nodes, and the treatment is needle aspiration of that abscess and broad-spectrum antibiotics. That hoarseness that occurs, sometimes you're cheering too much, but sometimes it is from an infection, that is called a laryngitis. It is inflammation of the mucous membranes lining the larynx, or possible edema of the vocal cords. It is manifested by acute hoarseness, dry mouth, difficulty swallowing, 
temporary voice loss, known as aphonia. Treatment for laryngitis remains focused on relief and prevention, so voice rest, inhaling steam, increasing fluid intake, and providing throat lozenges. Also, remind the patient to reduce the use of tobacco products and alcohol, which have an irritating effect on the larynx. Influenza is a highly contagious viral respiratory infection. Manifestations of influenza include severe headache, muscle ache, fever, chills, fatigue, weakness, and anorexia. Influenza can be dangerous, so therefore, vaccination is advisable. Influenza viruses are divided into three families. They are noted as A, B, and C. And influenza type A are the, is the type of influenza that can infect not only people, but birds, pigs, horses, and other animals. And two of these circulate frequently amongst humans, the H1N1 virus and the H3N2. These are two subtypes that are usually included in the seasonal flu vaccines each year. Influenza type B is usually only found in humans, and they can cause illness amongst humans, but in general, they're associated with less severe infections than type A viruses. And type C viruses cause mild illnesses in humans, but are mostly confined to different types of animals. The avian flu, that is H5N1, is usually not transmitted to humans. It's highly contagious to birds, um, and it is not normally included in the seasonal vaccine. Influenza by itself is not deadly. However, influenza sets us up for deadly complications. For instance, things like pneumonia, sepsis, and in some cases, the immune response to influenza is so great that it actually causes harm. This is why many scientists believe that children who are otherwise healthy can die of the influenza virus. These patients were noted to complain of shortness of breath, which is very unusual with influenza and shows that there was probably an abnormal response in their lungs causing gas exchange issues. And because influenza is highly contagious, it can cause a pandemic, that is, an epidemic throughout the world. These are mostly prevalent amongst animals and birds. Viruses can mutate, however, and they become infectious to humans, such as the swine flu, the H1N1. So in these cases, strict isolation precautions are given and antiviral drugs, including Tamiflu, should be used in order to reduce the incidence and the severity of the influenza. Influenza on the best of days makes you feel terrible. It affects your whole body, not only your nose, throat, and lungs, but high fever, cough, and muscle aches are very common, with more severity than the common cold. Therefore, teaching about vaccination, particularly to those folks who are most at risk, is indicated to reduce the severity of seasonal influenza. On a side note, gastroenteritis is sometimes referred to as the stomach flu, but is caused by a bacteria and not an influenza virus. That does conclude this episode. However, there are still more respiratory episodes to come. Thank you for listening. I hope you learned a little bit. I hope you plan on coming back to listen some more. And if you are, we'll see you then. Take care now.